expressed here are not supported by and do not reflect those of the Evening Rush Network. Viewer's discretion is advised. You are now plugged in with Molly and Joe, the Mental Warriors, along my brother Zachariah Yisrael, another Mental Warrior from a long time. We clap it up, clap it up. We usually have claps and all that other good stuff. But unfortunately, um, due to a lot of what's going on and, you know, um, COVID, the, the rise of the COVID cases, we're going to speak on that in our current event topics. There's a lot of things, you know, a lot is happening. People who have to handle family situations. So I just want to shout out to Sean Don and his family. Hopefully everything is fine. You know, hearing that his, you know, his wife dealing with things. Um, obviously, you see Joseph not here, and he's dealing with things as well. Um, there's a lot of people been dealing with this. Um, with this, I guess some some would call it a plague, brother. What do you think, Zachariah? It's definitely a plague. Um, yeah, I mean, you know. There's there's a lot of uh, different strains out there right now, and uh, you know every every so often a new mutated strain comes out. Yeah, mm. but it is definitely a plague, regardless oh. of uh, how we got here. Yeah, so we're gonna <laughs> talk about that. We're gonna talk about it in our current event section. Um, topic of the day. Topic of the day. We're gonna finish up this Colin Kaepernick um docu series, documentary, docu series, whatever you want to call it. It was very enlightening and um, very powerful. Colin Kaepernick, quarterback, the black activist, part two of two. This is our last part to that. We're going to finish it off. Um, just speak on the things that we thought was um, thought should be highlighted. And there was a lot to it. You know, there was a lot going on in that show. Colin Kaepernick, quarterback to civil rights activist, part two. All right. I mean, because we're just some hood guys that's, you know, from hood guys to to to, to, to activists, right? So let's let's do this. Um, you know what we do. We're going to um, give flowers where it's, where it's due. Um, Zachariah have somebody in mind. I have somebody in mind. So we're going to pay homage and give them their flowers right now, right here while they exist and not wait for them to be part of the ancestral um, lineage. Um, and then we also have what you already know, current events. That's where we're going to talk about different topics like COVID. We're going to talk about, yeah, I know it's not homage. We're going to make a, making our ancestors proud. I know it's, it's making right. our ancestors proud. But in doing so, we are, we you know, we give a salute to those people as well. All yeah. right. Um, current events, of course, we're going to speak about COVID. We're going to speak about um what's happening for the new year for, you know, because it's the calendar new year. I mean, although there are people that speak on different, different aspects of the year being the new year, some people um, celebrate the new year in April. Some people celebrate it in September. Some people celebrate it whenever they feel like it. But um, in my, in my, men, in my, in my mentality, the new year happens around, you know, when things is coming to life, you know what I'm saying? That, that, got, that, that just pay, that just makes sense for me, but you know, I'll just go with what they're saying. The calendar New Year is coming up, and what we expect from that, and that's what we, you know, that's a, that that that's the introduction right there. Uh, the platforms we on. What platforms we on there, Zachariah? Oh, okay. You putting it on. <laughs> we are on Amazon Music, Pandora, Stitcher, uh -huh. Podchaser, Tune In, Reasons Podcast, Google Podcast, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Anchor.fm, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Mixcloud, iTunes Podcast, the Evening Rush Network, of course, and don't forget to download the app. Yeah, he was speaking on the app earlier, so maybe we might not be saying that too many more, more times. He was talking about, oh. yeah, no more app. Yeah, no more app, unfortunately. But, you mm -hmm. know, listen, listen, listen. You know, I'm, I'm pretty sure to get back up when it's necessary. Uh, the reason why I put you on the spot like that is because, you know, I, sometimes I feel like I'll be running my mouth. Oh, yep, there's still an app. Okay, there's still an app. It just won't be the commercial for the app today. Okay, okay, copy. okay. copy you, Sean. Copy, copy that, copy that, copy that, copy that. Um, oh, good. You, you can put me on the spot for that, man. You can do that because, you know, that's my no, job. No, but I, I, I'll, be forget, I'll, be, I'll be forgetting that you're going to more than make up for it later on. So, I, you know, I'm going to <laughs> run it down, right? Yeah, <laughs> you're going to. Go. Oh, they're fixing the commercial. Okay, we're having technical difficulties with the commercial. All right, cool. Okay. I mean, he might need me to do some voiceovers. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Who knows? 
All right. But, you know, um, so right now in sports, you know, the Knicks is doing horrible. The, the Giants is out of it. Um, Zach is not a sports fan. Joe is gone. <laughs> Don't even ask me. Yeah, I'm not even asking you. Yep, spring equinox <laughs> equal to new year. Yes, I, I do agree. I do agree, producer extraordinaire. I do agree. I do agree. I do yep. agree. Um, shout out! Sense. I want to shout out to 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 my wife Tiff, who um pro- gave me my little green screen situation behind here. I actually like it. It's kind of cool, you know. Got a little, you know, got you no know, put my put my plug back there. So I'm gonna switch it up each week. Have some different, some powerful. Who knows? You know what I mean? Who knows what next week might bring? Right? Just mess Uh-oh. with the green screen. I'm gonna have to give me one now. Yeah, 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 yeah. If I if I can find another one, I'll try to snatch it up for you, brother. Trust me, I'm gonna I'm gonna actually put that. A, I'm gonna make that a mission. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, you know I mean, um, and around this time, what we do right now is we highlight people that say that we say, okay, they are making our ancestors proud. Our ancestors, those that actually paved the way for us to be here, to be having a show like Plug and um and other 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 platforms such as this um as we are reading our new book i mean i don't know if zachariah tackled it yet you know you start to get a sense of pride and all that we we, we were able to accomplish as a people to even get here today so you have to take pride in that in a sense and these are some of the men that's continue to make our ancestors proud you know what i mean um and we want to give them flowers today so zachariah who you got today a uh, perfect segue for why we able to have a platform like this. Today I'm going to be talking about Ice Cube. Okay. So born O'Shea Jackson uh, Sr. His son is also named after him. Right. Uh, on June 15, 1969. Uh, an American rapper, actor, and filmmaker. Uh, we know him from one of the godfathers of what we know as gangster rap today. <laughs> uh, one of one of the the stars of the group NWA, um, and his albums um, straight out of Compton, basically paved the way for what gangster rap and rapper is today. America's most wanted death certificate, um, you know. So I just think uh, men like him definitely paved the way for for a platform like this to exist because. Um, you know, he was never afraid to speak his mind. He painted the picture of what America was not ready for at that time. Um, a lot of people may not, may or may not know this. He wrote almost all of the um, the the lyrics for for the different members of N.W.A., including Eazy-E and Dr. Dre. I watched um, that um documentary he had. Yeah. Yeah. So um, you know, he's basically responsible for you know what that gangster rap era started that 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 spark that started that whole gangster rap era and rap music would not have have reached what it what it came to be um at its height i would say if it had not been for gangster rap because it paved the way for rappers to speak the truth about their lives of what they seen on the street and not and what they knew as in everyday life um you know to let the world know what's going out here what 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 the life is like actually in the ghetto and the mentality of the people and and that uh shed a new light on what uh mainstream or white america might think goes on in the black community and so you know ice cube is definitely a pioneer for that uh, what people don't also might not know, he has he's responsible for almost fifty movies or fifty or more. Mm. Uh, we know him most for my favorite, Boys in the Hood, which was his first debut, um, and then you know things like uh, Friday, um, uh, some of the the lesser known like Anaconda, CB4, <laughs> uh, you know. But CB4 uh, was funny. CB4 was actually funny. CB4. It was. It was. Um, Triple X, the State of the Union, um, yeah. you know, 21 Jump Street, you know, uh, all the, the Barbershop series, you know. So he, he basically, I, I believe that all of his work embodies a, a certain um, uh, viewpoint, you know, to, to shed light on, on the lifestyle, life and times of uh, black families in America. And whether that be in the hood or even on, you know, middle class middle to middle to upper class uh what it's like to be black in america and you know 
I just uh, give shout out to him, you know, giving props to Ice Cube, man. You keep doing the, the damn thing. And it's because of people like you, we are able to have a platform like this today. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Indeed. Indeed. We usually be clapping it up right about now. But as we said, you know, due to situations today, we just going to do it the normal way. Give them, you know, put our energy into it. Right. All right. right. So most definitely, um, I mean, Ice Cube, I mean, very inspirational. Like I said, Boys in the Hood. We talk about gangster rap. We talk about all the things that he represented. We talking about F the police and all these different things. Um, He he he. He was the beginning of what you would say. Um, he was an, he was a, he was a rap activist in a sense. Absolutely, you know what I mean? he was a rap activist. You know, what I mean, it's not many of them that actually, you know, said what they felt. You know, what I mean, and threw all caution to the wind and just let it be, let it, let it go. One one more thing, I forgot. I was supposed to end off with this quote because it, it's it's exactly why we have this platform. And he said, "I think the worst thing you can do about a situation." is nothing that's right. that's one of the more famous quotes that i love from from ice cube man. he's absolutely right you got to say something yeah and then from one great from one one of the greats um i'm gonna go to the next one of the greats i'm i'm surprised we haven't even said it maybe it was because it's so cliche that it's like okay once you hear his name it's like of course right and um someone who continues to make our ancestors proud who has made our ancestors proud through all that he has done the great the GOAT, Michael Jordan. Michael, oh, Michael Jeffrey Jordan. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, the name speaks for itself. MJ, he, you know, came into the NBA as a as a rookie in 85. And this man has been the symbol of black excellence, in a sense, for a yeah. long time, brother. For a long, long time speak as you may you may judge him you know because of the jordan brand and he capitalized but all that you want to say listen this man deserves every flower that we could possibly give him because all he all he did was epitomize winning winning you know what i mean what a, what a champion is you know what i'm saying right. he took the bull he took the bulls from obscurity they was a no they was a no-name team and he made them champions um six times over you understand and he was one of the greatest to ever do it he took down the greatest he took down the likes of my um uh, magic johnson he took the likes he took down the likes of larry burr he took like he took down the greats he took down hall of famers like people sit here today and be talking about co- trying to compare lebron james man i, I mean listen i'm I've lived through both eras. Everybody act like I'm dead because you know what I'm saying because I don't I don't agree with them that this LeBron doesn't doesn't match up to this man, but he don't. You know what I mean? He's the epitome of what winning is. You know what I mean? My father once told me. I'll tell you a story. My father once told me, and he taught me. It's like, what's you know? What do you think is the key to Michael Jordan's winning? Right. And I'm sitting there like, what, his will to win? I'm saying all the cliches, you know, his will to win, all this other stuff, blah, blah, blah. And you know what he said? He said, stamina in the fourth quarter. Something as simple Ooh. as that. Stamina Ooh. in the fourth quarter. He says, listen, he says, the thing about Michael Jordan, when it's, when it's game time, he still got the same energy as if it was the first quarter. That's and right. you know what I mean? And that, that listen, that goes a long way into life itself. You know what I mean? Oh. When it's game time, you have to have the energy necessary the same energy you had when you first got into it. You know what I mean? You got to continue to have that energy when it's crunch time. You know what I'm saying? So you know how my pops was, man. He was a, he was, oh, a, yeah. he was always a man that was hitting us with, with wise sayings. You know what I mean? Like one of them, one of them Chinese, one of them Chinese little monks or something <laughs> just, just hitting us with many wise sayings. But yes, Michael Jordan, you deserve all the flowers that, that possibly can be. You, you beat up on my Knicks for so many years. I mean, like, beat him i mean like and the funny part is people would think i'm a michael jordan fan per se i became a michael jordan fan and out of respect for all the greatness that he did possess so with that being said i want to give my flowers to michael jordan salute to you brother you know you beat up on the knicks for all these years i'm glad i was able to witness it um we could have got one or two out of there but we didn't get none so I'm just going to just sit here and sit on my tears. Okay, Sean, I'm sure you're happy about that part, that I'm kind of sad about this, <laughs> that Michael Jordan beat on the Knicks for all those years. But, yes, I'm going to give him his props, making our ancestors proud. Ice Cube, 
and Michael Jordan. Salute. Definitely. Yes, most deaf, most deaf, most deaf. All right, so, you know, moving straight on ahead, you know what I mean? We're going from making our ancestors proud, and what is our next one? It's current events, current events, current events. Oh, he's he, he had to throw Brooklyn in there. Brooklyn is number one now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you arguably got one of the one of the goats of this time. You know what I'm saying? So, I, I you know, y'all get y'all little props right now. But you got to win that chip, though. Y'all got to win that championship, bro. Got to win that championship. You can't be sitting here talking all this mess and y'all win no championship. All right? That's all I'm saying. All right. Current events. All right? This is our current event section. This is the section where we speak on topics that's going on um, in the world, in our neighborhoods, throughout the nation, just things that's on our mind. All right? And the first thing up, I'm sure it's it's near and dear to everyone all around. I just finished speaking on our um our network our network boss he's he's dealing with it in his household i've dealt with it in my household and i'm pretty sure a lot of people is dealing with it everywhere all over the place i you know thank god haven't had to deal with it and that's covid covid the covid variants the delta variant the um, omarion amaricron whatever it might be i don't know but <laughs> yeah um, poor omarion man yeah, yeah, they chose the wrong name for him, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, so out here in New York, I'm not sure what's going on in Cali, but out here in New York, testing locations and the lines for the testing locations is out is going crazy, bro. What I'm talking about, and mine is a little chilly out here, and these lines be a block long around the corner. Um, outside, mind you, people are outside in these little trucks or what have you. So what's going on in Cali when it comes down to these, you know, to testing? Is everything going, what's going on with the numbers out there? Yeah, it's definitely not the same on this side. We're in like really? two different two two different worlds. Wow. So, so where I'm at, there's like, you know, I, I had a, before I traveled to New York, you know, a couple months back, um, they come to your house. They bring you the kit. Like the guy waits outside, you go inside, you get on the app and the doctor tells you how to do the swab, You put it back in there. The guy waits outside, you bring it to him. And in 24 hours, I had my results. You know, um, I know there are testing facilities. I had to go see my son in the hospital. Uh, it was a while back, about over a month ago, almost two months. Um, and I couldn't get in. So I had to pay a hundred dollars for the rapid COVID test. Um, yeah, that's how much they cost in out here. And Wait, I got hey, it. Hold I got on, it. Hold on. They they charging you guys for the test? For the rapid test. Like they're not charging you know, out here. For the 24 hour test, I could um, you know, I, that was free. And they even come came to my house free, you know. But for the rapid test, I needed to get into the hospital that same day. And across the street from the hospital, there was like a little clinic, and I paid a hundred dollars and in ten minutes I got my results. And no line or nothing, like the place was empty. You know, so that's crazy, bro. Yeah, I think in New York there's just a saturation of people in a in a small area. You know what I mean? I think I read a statistic the other day. There's almost eight million people in New York City alone. You know what I mean? So just think about that. And 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 in California, the state is so big. Uh, somebody says there's a hundred dollars in New York too if you purchase in the pharmacy or something. Oh wow! I'm the yeah. So, yeah, but it's totally different. The numbers are not high where I am. You know, I'm like an hour and a half uh, east of L.A. Um, L.A. is not really like that either. You know, everything's still open. You know, the certain places you have to wear a mask. Mm -hmm. And that's about it. You know, New York is just. Well, uh, well New York, New York, New York has his has his rules, bro. You see, and we're, we're, I guess we're trying to be the. The, the front runners and how how we're dealing with this this situation um so i mean you know the rules are the rules you have to be vaccinated to to be in restaurants um the schools the schools i don't know what's going on they should just close up the schools right now because bro left it like i said the numbers is going up and up and up bro the numbers is not going down and mind you it's people that i know for a fact been dodging this thing for two years you know what I'm saying? For two years dodging this, and all of a sudden, this whole new variant or what have you, just catching everybody left and right. Like I said, it's even 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 invaded my house, and that was kind of scary. And it wasn't scary in the sense where, you know, he was dealing with you know a lot of pain or anything like that. It was scary in the sense like, wow, 
you know what I mean, is here, you know, and I'm just glad it wasn't, you know, as bad as it could have been in the past, you know? Well, here's another thing, you know, over here on this side, I think I mentioned to you before, if not on an, on the, on live on, the, on an episode, I, I mentioned to you how my wife had to give up her career in nursing because she was refusing to get vaccinated, and that's a, a, a sort of a mandated thing in uh, hospitals and facilities out here. Um, but she recently went back to work because there's a shortage of healthcare professionals, and now these facilities, not hospitals, but the home care facilities and rehabilitation facilities are accepting nurses that are not vaccinated. I bet they are. I bet you know? they are. <laughs> and, and she even tells me when, when she's just started going back to work, she's like, yeah, there's like, mm -hmm. you know, four nurses to a station when it's usually like six to eight. Wow. You know? So they're dealing with a lot of patients. Shortages. And shortages will always make, will always move the needle. It's just like, well, that's why people um, go on strike. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. You know, try to move, try to move the needle one way or another, you know? So um, we'll get back to COVID in another situation dealing with here locally here in New York. Um, but we're going to go to the next topic, which is the Kyle Rittenhouse video. I don't know if we got the video footage. It's probably a little long, but matter of fact, we're not even going to give them no props. Forget that video. We don't want to, I don't want to yeah. give them no views. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But weeks after Kyle Rittenhouse said he wanted to lay low when he was found not guilty of homicide, attempted homicide, and other charges related to last year's fatal shooting that rocked Kenosha, Wisconsin. The teen was welcomed Monday at a conservative conference to music, pyrotechnics, and a standing ovation from thousands of attendees. Mm -hmm. You're a hero to millions. The Turning Point USA leader Charlie Coke tore Rittenhouse during the group's America Fest gathering in Phoenix. Bro, um, that's like business as usual, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Um, but um, it's disgusting at the same time to where, I mean, like, as much as I've seen it in the past, this one just bothers me a little bit more because there was there was loss of life, and the loss of life was due to them um, fighting our cause. You understand what I'm saying? The, the loss yeah, of life yeah, was yeah, was because yeah. people were sitting there and and thought thought my life mattered. You understand what I'm saying? And thought any you know thought all of our lives mattered. And here go this young this young this young murderer come and take these people out man and then he is paraded around as he's a hero a hero for yeah, taking yeah. lives yeah i mean we don't you know like he said somebody thought that all of our lives mattered i don't want to get that misconstrued that some of the listeners because it was really about the a black lives matter thing and they you know everybody knows what's going on and uh you know we have certain people that are of other ethnicities that came out and showed support and, and, and also get down and dirty in the trenches and, and, you know, big ups to them. But now here we have it where this guy was rushed over with his assault rifle, talking with, with a, a precedence as if he was going to protect somebody that was in danger when he was actually going to do harm. You know, yeah. and now he's being painted as a hero. Yeah. And you got like white people like celebrating, you know, I mean, this is this is this is crazy, but I'm not surprised, man. Nothing in this country surprises me anymore, man. Even when I hear a new, you know, COVID strain come out, I'm not surprised. When I hear these these white cops getting off and vindicated, I'm not surprised. When I hear these these guys like Rittenhouse being celebrated and they're throwing shows in arenas for them, I'm not surprised. You know, it's a sad thing that this thing is becoming so uh, normal. You know. So, so, is so it, is it, is, is it becoming normal. normal? Is it becoming Not normal? normal. Becoming Not routine? normal. I think it's been normal. I think it's it been has. normal. It has. It's been it routine. has. It has. And, and I think now with the, you know, with people's ability to share on social media and, you know, there's so many, you could just have your own blog. You don't have to be a news channel. You know, these things get out more because the people that are behind it and love these type of, uh, th that agree with Rittenhouse and view him as a hero. They got blogs. They got social media channels. They got YouTubes. They, they use got, their platforms. They use their they platforms do. the they way do. better than we do. I mean, I'll tell you and, that much. I'm, I'm you kinda, took it I'm out of my mouth. I'm kind of envious in that in that sense. Like, cause you took it out of my mouth. 
Here go. I mean, they like. I wish we could have a whole room full of people to to to, to speak our talk, but maybe we can. Maybe we're just selling ourselves short. You know what I we mean? We can. We can. And I think you know the the footwork has to be done because there's people out there that feel the same way as we do. You know, okay. there's people out there that 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 are willing to support and come out. I mean, if you would have seen what the streets of L.A. looked like you know, during the nonviolent protests, like the, the media painted a picture of that was not at all real. You know, right. we have these Antifa groups and, and people that are coming out, you know, actually pretending to be protesters and inciting riots and burning things and looting. And then they, the, the news paints it as, well, these are the Black Lives Matter people and it's not really a nonviolent protest when that's not true. These were other groups that came out there to make it look as if the people that were actually protesting are you know, uh, creating problems. And and in, if you would have saw the streets of LA, you would have saw the diversity of people that were out there in nonviolent protests for blocks. I mean, police had to like barricade a certain, like about a mile in each direction because okay. the, the streets were flooded. Okay. So there, there are people that will support it. All right. And a couple of more topics we're touching on. So now here in New York City, I mean, we talked about COVID a little bit about uh, what's going on, what's the name, but COVID, rise in COVID cases, right? It's a major rise, a major spike. And MTA da- the MTA shuts down lines due to COVID. They shut down their lines due to COVID. Like they, you know, they um, employees homesick, what have you. And the Department of Education insists that school, re- school remains open. That's just that's just the herd that's just the herd mentality because you got to get the cattle to go and do work right so you got to you got to do something with the kids right yeah yeah I saw I saw a meme the other day a guy was showing how people are like six feet apart in line to get you know before you go through TSA in the airport and then the next picture shows everybody sitting you know six inches away from each other on the plane <laughs> you know, and he's like, "Show me how this makes sense." You know, right, right, and, right. And right. so, you know, it's it's like you said, it's a herd mentality, and and you know, when it's profitable for the economy, you know, this is only much so much shutting down they're gonna do. You know what I mean? Yeah, like I said, herd mentality, sis. It's because the parents have to work, That's so the kids got to go to school. The That's cows right. got to work. The horses That's got to right. work. So the kids got to do something. Got to do something with these kids. Like, I mean, and school you know, school is the training of the herd, isn't it? Is it not? Exactly, right? It is. Okay. It is yeah, you are herd. Yeah. yeah, they are sheep, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know what I mean, It's the next. It's the, it's, the, it's our it's our next segment. All right, we're going to just skip over to you know what I mean. All right, so we got our first one. Um, it's a it's 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 it's, 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 it's a race, right? It's a race. So you have on the left hand mm-hmm. side, we got a white man. And then we have on the le- on the right hand side, you got a black woman, black man, black woman. I mean, listen, you put a, you put either one, and one starting with a with a ball and chain. The she other got one, a ball and chain on her leg. Yeah, she has a ball and chain on her leg. The black There's woman. And, mine's on the floor in front yeah, of her. Yeah, yeah, mine's <laughs> on the floor. Bob wire, an alligator pit, a rock, a, a, a wall. Uh, uh, I don't know what's that back there. That uh, looks like a pit with uh, spears sticking out of it, facing <laughs> up. So she will have to, you know, jump over or something. Right. That, that, now that's her course, and the other course is this white man, and all he has to do is maybe two hurdles, and he's gone clear. What is he and saying? That, that and that's the epitome, and that's the epitome, and that this meme just sums up our lives just right there. You know what I mean? <laughs> we. We have to we have to go through every every hurdle, right? What is so he saying? To caption, her? So now the caption is now watch this. After we explain how it goes down, the caption is now watch what the nerve this man has. Stop complaining. It's the same distance. You blacks always play the race card. Wow. You, you know the funny thing when I saw this meme, first thing that came to my mind is I can't wait till we're able to press play. And she d- hops over the, the barbed wire and avoids the mines, <laughs> does a flip, lands on the alligator nose, does but another that's exactly flip. that's what we wind up doing, you know? And but still that's, beats him to the finish line. That's my point. Well, that's exactly what we've been doing through our history, is that every obstacle they put up before us, guess what? We knock them all down, bro, to this day. Yeah. 
to this yeah. day. You understand what I'm saying? They said, you know, they raised the bar. We go and get it anyway. We go and touch it anyway. And that was the importance of the book that we're into. I can't wait till we start talking about that in the new year. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, we have one more, you know what I mean? But I think we, we, we're going to do, we ain't even going to worry about that one this week. We're going to save that one for next week. So we got one out the way. Um, stop complaining, black folk. It's the same distance. Blacks always play the race card. And I, I and I implore you guys to continue to do so. So what we're going to do have now is a word from the Evening Rush Network. Looking to podcast shows and do not know where to start? The Evening Rush Network can help you with that. Call us at 929-441-2417 or email us at theeveningrushnetwork at gmail.com for dates and prices. We got you for all your podcast needs. The Evening Rush Network. Tune in, subscribe, and share. We are back. We are back. Shout out to the Evening Rush Network, the Evening Rush Network, the Evening Rush Network. We are sponsored by none other than my favorite organization. That's my organization. That is Bala, Big Appalachian Academy for the Arts. Uh, we are on Instagram. That's Plugged MJ. That's at Plugged MJ. Uh, we also on Facebook. That's Plugged with Molly and Joe. Plugged with Molly and Joe. We're on all them platforms that we have spoken on before prior. Um, that's Amazon Music, Pandora, Stitcher, Podchaser, TuneIn, Reasons Podcast, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Anchor.fm, iHeartRadio, MixCloud, iTunes Podcast, the EveningRushNetwork.com. And they also have to download the Evening Rush Network app on both Android and Apple. Okay. Um, our topic for the day is Colin Kaepernick. Quarterback, the civil rights activist, part two. We're going to dive in to the t to the um, Netflix um, documentary and speak on it, um, finish it out. Speak on it and finish it out. But first, what we're going to do is we're going to speak on what can we expect for the new year, Zach? Let's, let's, let's talk about that real quick. What we can expect for the new year for you? Oh, for me personally? Uh, listen, for everybody, it don't matter. For what oh, you okay. think is going to happen. Oh, well... Yeah. Yeah, brief. Give me a quick uh, minute. Yeah, I'm. I'm not a. Uh, I'm. Not, I'm not at all a pessimist. I'm a very optimistic person. I'm a half glass full kind of guy. So, yes. as far as you know, the way society is going, you know, we know things uh, are getting worse. And for me, that's not a reason for you know to get down. So I have a lot of big plans for myself you know, um, for, for things that I would like to do of, of this nature, where we could go with the show, um, you know, but I do foresee a lot of changes coming in society. You know, I'm, I'm, um, I'm in the business world, a little tech side and things are, there's a lot of new software out there that's changing the way we do business, the way we live our, our everyday lives, okay. um, you know, and things, AI is taking over machine learning and these things are going to affect society in the long run. You know what I mean? And, and you know, there's nanotechnology. There's, you know, there, there's, Matrix. There's, there's cryptocurrency, you know, all of this stuff. And society, society has to adapt to this as well as government making new rules to 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 keep up with everything. You well, know, teach so, me, brother. Teach me, please. Well, well, I mean, I'm still learning myself, but, you know, a lot of people made a, uh, a lot of money last year off of cryptocurrency. And so now, you know, the IRS is cracking down. And uh, I just read an article today that says, you know, that it's encouraging people to report their illegal earnings, including. I heard about that. That's that, that's that, that's that under the table money now. <laughs> like... Yeah. And, and it, they're encouraging people to do it. And because there's a privacy act involved where the law enforcement can access your IRS records. So they're encouraging people to to report, you know, drug deal money, uh, uh, anything stolen or embezzled, you know, like who's going to do that? But at the same time, you know, it's for a reason because a lot of people made money off cryptocurrency last year and the government can't put their hands in those people's they pockets. They can't tax it, right? They can't tax you know? it. So, so they actually so seized over over uh, 3.5 billion of that already from people mm -hmm. that were taking it, you know, man, but so just just know a lot of things are changing and, and I know society's going to change. I'm expecting more strains of COVID, possibly even something stronger than COVID coming around. But, you know, for me, my head is high. You know, my, my views are always optimistic. 
you know, and I put my trust in the most high God for myself and my family moving forward. And, you know, hey, you know, we got to deal with it as it comes. Right. Um, but 2022. Expect, yep, 2022, what I expect for the new year. Um, I expect I expect bigger and better things. I mean, I'm just going to keep continue to grow, um, continue to grow our brand, continue to grow what I'm trying to do in the community um, as it come. I mean, I'm like you said, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a silver lining guy. They call me Mr. Silver Lining where, you know, in my exactly. circle. And the reason being is because I could find, you know, I could find something positive in any situation. So, you know, there's that. So therefore next year is going to be just as positive as the year past. I mean, of course you had your ups, your downs, you had your sad moments the moments that made you cry all of that good stuff, you know what I mean? But um, without those moments, you don't, you don't, you're not the strong person you are today. You know what I mean? You're not who you are today without those moments. So, you know, with that being said, we're going to segue right into our topic for the day. All right. Colin Kaepernick from quarterback to activist. All right. We're discussing Colin in black and white part two of two. Okay. Um, So last week we, I mean, two weeks ago, matter of fact, sorry about last week. We, you know, holidays people probably wasn't paying attention anyway getting their stuff together anyway but um two weeks ago we we started um this topic about Colin Kaepernick and it was it was very deep if you get it you know you start seeing different you know once you start watching it you see different topics um I know in one of your notes you had wrote in Black Reconstruction by W.E.B. Du Bois when speaking about the commonalities between working class blacks and whites wrote the white group of laborers, while they received a low wage, were compensated in part by a public and psychological wage. They were given public difference and titles of public courtesy because they were white. White laborers would admittedly freely would admit it freely with all classes of white people to public functions, public parks, and the best schools. The police were drawn from their ranks and the courts depended on their votes treated with such leniency as to encourage lawlessness which we see today right right mm -hmm. so you write that why like you 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 made a note of that talk to me why did you make a note of that right there what what, 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 what did you see in this in that in that little statement there well if you if, when you watch um you know Colin in black and white he shows a lot of footage of of that and he, he mentions briefly um, about this uh, quote from W.E.B. Du Bois. And, um, you know, you see it. You see, you know, whites having fun in all these parks where blacks are not allowed. You see white people given, you know, courtesy by police in the streets, whereas it's the opposite for black folks, you know. And it's been, and it shows these pictures in black and white, like what was going down uh, before and during the civil rights movement. But nothing has changed today, you know. Um, yeah, there's no more whites only signs, but you go into certain towns and into certain places and you're going to know you're not welcome. You can feel it. You can feel like, the white only sign. I have a joke with, with my wife when we, you know, we go out of town and we drive through certain towns where you could just feel it's one of them, you know, them redneck hillbilly white towns. And, you know, I, I had to use the bathroom, you know, a couple of times on those road trips. You say, why don't you stop right here? This little diner. I said, nope, that's one of those. Uh, we don't take to your kind up in here type of diner. <laughs> and, uh, I was like, we will not be stopping anywhere like this along the way, you know. Right, and and right. you know that and, that's those still exist everywhere, and, you know. And they do, the and I, they do. Um, I, I, I had to, I had the privilege to, 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 to experience it. I mean, me personally, I'm the kind of, I'm the kind of antagonist that I want to see it all. I want to, I want to mm -hmm. feel it. I want to see it. I want to know what, what it's all about. I. I was working in West Virginia and um, they, it was working for Dish Network and they needed they needed help. So they they'll call a bunch of us from New York City to go out to Dish, you know, to go out to these to these, you know, to these towns that need that because it might have been a, it might have been a storm, whatever. It might have been a hurricane, something knocked down the dishes. So we got to go up there and help them put up dishes because they don't have enough technicians. So they go up there. And the first day when I knew we was in for a nice little experience is when they looked at our um, our our route, the management, the, 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 the district, the manager said, yo, who did this? 
right? And was mad. I'm like, what do you mean who did this? We just sitting there like, we good. Like, you know, us New Yorkers, we from Brooklyn. Come on, give us our route. We out of here. He was like, nah, bruh. Whoever did this is bugging. Y'all not supposed to even go in these areas. Yo, there was areas that we wow. could not go in, right? Yeah. And then the next, the next rule they told us that when it gets dark, your day is done. So my yeah. winter time. Yeah. So it's winter time. So it was getting dark early or whatever, Bruh, They said once the sun go down, yeah, that's your last. That is your last um, job for the night. You you all start heading in um, to into back into back to headquarters. I'm sitting there like, what the hell is going on? Literally, they had places where we could not go as black people to do. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. To, to do the dishes mind you wind up still going to these areas because i'm a rebel anyway i just give me whatever whatever i'm out there and you see the you see the flags you see the confederate flags you see white kids that look like they never seen a black person in their life like i'm talking about literally looking at me like wow like what, who are you like what are you and like you said in one of them diners i went in one of these little back hole places or whatever where they could have left me there bro but you know I was walking with something different, so I, you know, it, 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 I, I've I've experienced it, man. I, I enjoyed it. I ain't gonna lie. I enjoyed I enjoyed being the difference in what they thought. You know what I'm saying? I yeah, enjoyed yeah, being yeah. being 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 their worst nightmare. You know what I mean? But but one of the other things that he was talking about in the um in the in the documentary in the show, um, he was talking about white privilege. He spoke about white privilege, white privilege that he thought he owned. As a mixed, you know, as a, as as a as a child of white parents, mm -hmm. he thought he just got that just by you know just through just through osmosis or what have you, yeah. you know what I mean. But um, he realized that wasn't the case for himself. He said once a once a Negro, always a Negro. You know what I mean. Once you got a little bit, listen, and, and they speak to it. And they speak to it in the past. They speak to it in the book we're reading, where it's like they yo, I'm telling you, they 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 literally they literally if you have any percentage of Negro in you. You are a Negro. Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess they, I guess we all are then. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I, 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 I conversation yet, brother. They never. When, I was, when yet. I was when I was rapping, man, you know, I, you know, I, I made a lot of music. Uh, and not too many, not too much of it was actually controversial or upon you know subjects of consciousness. But I made a song called, um, you know, Black on Black, right? And, um, you know, Jay-Z was on the hook, you know, basically we sampled his black on black, or it was called all, all black everything rather say, but he's right, like right, you right. Know, black on black on black and, and all black everything that was in the hook. And so I, I mentioned the line in the, in, the, in, the, in the song where I said, you know, basically the Ku Klux Klan is committing black on black crime because I made a reference that, you know, we all come from one man who was a black man. And so if you want to get technical, you out here talking about you lynching blacks, they're your relatives to white people. Right, right. And that's one thing, that's one thing about humanity that I the, um that I, that that I want people to realize. And that's the reason why like I, I had to get away from old old ways of teachings and old ways of talking and old ways of hate is because they would teach disunity when it's all about humanity. It's all about all of us yeah. doing this together because we're all, we all come from one beginning. You know what I mean? And once you come from one beginning and spread out, no matter what the colors are, man, no matter what the shapes, the form, because just because I'm six, two and you five, you, you know what I mean? You five foot three or something, not saying you five foot three, but you know, you, five, so nine, five, brother. Four, so yeah, you know what I mean? You, and listen, <laughs> they could make a Listen, think about it. You could make a, you, you could make a different, a difference with that oh oh us six twos only hang together you five nines mm -hmm. gotta go somewhere mm -hmm. you know what i mean yeah. you can yeah. turn that into anything you can race bait and that's something we speak to too you could race bait in all in, in, in any situation you could race bait anybody in, in all kinds of different ways you know what i mean you could be talking about i'm six two you five nine nah we don't rock with each other nah, you know, but, you said, it. White. Mm -hmm. but you said it you was like they're not ready for that conversation and i think what's important that we have to realize is because we've been so far uh, we've been distanced so far from from our root and our our origin that and, and color has colorism has been a thing for so many centuries right and you know racism is is so huge in this country even to the way it's taught and what we learn in school the whitewashing right. of history that now right. we're at a point where we have to get to the point where 
black people need to to unite first. Black right. people need well, that's to what, unite. That's, but that's what Colin Kaepernick was. That's, that's, the, that's exactly. The whole, that's the whole mission he was on when he took that kneel. He wanted to unite us in a, in a, in, a, in a cause where we start to we start to fight harder for our for our, for for our rights. You know what I mean? Yeah. To, 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 so so that we you know because what what he what he what what he made us realize is that this it was something that we already knew. There was a system against us, but what he made it mainstream for everyone else to realize there's a system that is actually against us because everything that's happened is drawn up throughout how the laws is made. You understand what I'm saying? So let's talk about, he says, he says, says it's, 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 it's quoted. He says, you know, we call, he says, talking about white privilege. He said, growing up, mm-hmm. we spoke about that. Then he spoke about how after he kneeled during the national act, anthem, here go Trump. Get that son of a bitch off the field. Out, get out. He's fired. All this other stuff yeah. and all this anti. You know what I mean? Mind you, Cap Cap actually. You know what I mean? Cap actually did nothing wrong. Peaceful protest, doing nothing. He was labeled yeah. unpatriotic, a race baiter, and a traitor. But as we're reading, he was more patriotic than most. Why? Because what? He's only want us to. He only want to highlight what we've done for this country so far. That's the, we're one of the most patriotic people there is. I mean, you know, like people would call that word patriotic and as if it belongs to white people, you know. And, uh-huh. and, and, and yeah, really, you know, white people believe that, you know, we're the only ones that could be patriotic. I, I say we, but I'm quoting them because I don't count myself under that we. Um, and, and, you know, and, and black people will look at it as it's, it's almost wrong for them to be patriotic, depending mm-hmm. on where you come from. If you're not from a military family and you grew up in the hood, black people will be like, man, fuck all this patriotic shit. Fuck America. You know what I'm saying? Right, but, right. But, but the thing is, I believe it's important to understand that, that that's why history is so important, man. Pete. Oh. We have to educate ourselves Hello. because if you understand that your ancestors built this country. It was Ah. built on the backs of slaves. You know, I I, I mentioned in my poem that I still want to want to want to share at the end of the show. No, we don't need the video. We don't need the video footage. But I I want to, you know, a point in the poem is that, you know, they brought this country off of its knees and put it on its feet while they were on their knees being beaten. And their ancestors grew into some of the most prominent people that American history has ever known. Teach, you know, brother, you, teach, teach, you want to teach, talk teach. about the resilience of a people and, you know, this to me, this can only be, I don't you know, whoever out there, me, I believe in the most high God. Other people might believe in the universe or what destiny is or that we, we as men and human beings have the power mm-hmm. to be masters of our own destiny, which I believe also God gave us that power. However you want to slice it, whatever your belief is, this was meant to be the way it went down. You know, you spoke about it earlier and I'm going to just throw this in there. You yes. know, we the the, the largest growth comes from when you step out of your comfort zone more yeah. so by force than by choice yes yes you know and, and that's and, what yeah, we're talking yeah, about here yeah and 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 um that's what happened here like like every, everything that's happening now with when you talk about the podcast when you talk about um my my, my community work everything was by I, was, I it wasn't it wasn't by choice per se i i always chose that i wanted to be able to do something like that but I think I was my hands was forced, my hands, my hands was tied tied mm-hmm. behind my back to make these things happen. And even so, it's it's even even weekly. Sometimes people think that it's easy just to get in front of this camera. Some people are camera some people are some people are camera hogs. Some people want all of that fame and you know, and all of that other stuff. That's not what we're about. You understand what I'm saying? Not so it becomes difficult to get in front of this camera and be able to teach our people. You know what I mean? That's what people don't understand. You know what I mean? They think it comes easy to be able to talk to them. You know what I mean? And it don't. You understand what I'm saying? So you're right. You know? And as we keep going, um, you know, st- you know, staying on topic a little bit, we get back to the white privilege. Because um, in, in, in his documentary, it was a moment where he, you know, it was second seconds. You know, we're going to talk about second yeah. seconds. And then... Um, the white stares and the racist suspicions. I I I, I labeled that under the, the microaggressions. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's like yeah. it's like they not they're not going to put it, their hands on him. They're not going to try to get him arrested. But what mm-hmm. they're going to do is try to softly tell him his place. You know what I mean? Yeah. And within within the boundaries of the rules. So 
Like, okay, second seconds, we're going to explain for a little, real quick. White kids go back for seconds and even second seconds or free ice cream, cookies, because it's free ice cream, cookies, and apples given out at the hotel when they came, you know, the host, when they came to the hosting hotel and for his baseball tournament. And Colin mm-hmm. kept getting denied after his first. So he'll get one ice cream and they'll make sure they know that Colin got his first and his only. Now nah, you can't come back over here. Now these yeah. white boys is going back and forth getting seconds and third ice cream. So yeah. I'm going to get my second second. You bugging yeah. me. Yeah. Colin, <laughs> went up said, Colin went up and told the lady, he said, yeah, I, I'm just, uh, she's like, oh, you already had one. He said, uh, but everybody had one. And she's like, she's like, what? Well, I don't know about everybody, but I do know you had one. I've experienced, oh, I've experienced man. that. I've experienced that in my life. You know what I mean? I've experienced it. Don't you know the the microaggressions, like you know, trying to put me in my place, making sure that we know the rules. And that's what I've noticed that in that la- in them last little in them last little parts, it was always about people trying to put him in his place. And I think they knew that because he they knew that he was mixed. They knew that he had some privilege to him, but they always wanted to make sure that he knew that none of that privilege matters yeah. once you have an ounce of negro in you yeah you know i mean his his boy you know it was got up to go get his second second basically he was like oh nah you ain't gotta go get me one he's like no 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 no, i ain't getting you one i'm getting my second second you know and my my seconds on my second you know his third one basically see right, i was right, that right. type of kid where i've experienced that when i was coming up you know and i was the type of kid i go up and get the second second and then make sure they see me Give it to my black friend if he got denied. Right, know? right. You that kid. I know. Ooh, I know. Yeah. I, trust you me. Know? I know. I know that's that for sure. That's when I'm around. Yeah, yeah. And and does, trust me, brother. I appreciate you for it, man. And you know, um, also a part in there was the white stairs and the racist suspicions. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So he had a part in there with the hotel staff members stare, and make indignant racist assumptions and remarks at Colin every weekend while he had this baseball tournament. Now, mind you, baseball. You know, it's a little, it's a little, it's a little, it's a little wider, you know, yeah, a little wider, yeah, a little wider than most sports. You know what I'm saying? So I get it. You know what I mean? But um, yeah, baseball is sort of baseball is 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 not white. It's white. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So he get the the stares and the racial suspicions, and that's the mic that goes also to the microaggression that we spoke to. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And and I, like I said, I've. I've, I've experienced that as well, going to different places or what have you. Me, I face it head on. You know what I mean? I, I'll be honest with you. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, you're just I, a I, different kind of dude, Molly. You, you, you're a different kind of dude. And you yeah. know, you you walk, you have a presence that walks with you, my brother. So Yeah. 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 I, I appreciate you saying that because I'm glad it do because I know I'll probably yeah. be dead or something because I'd I be up and oh, I'm yeah. I am very up in their face about it. I don't care. Um, yeah. There was one part in 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 the document in the documentary that I really like. It really bothered me because they set us up for it, right? And I noticed that they were setting us up for it. They kept yeah, driving right. past this police officer every wow. time. Zach, they kept driving past this police officer. The pops, the moms, the pops, the moms, the pops, yep. the moms, pops, the moms. They finally let Cap drive. Yeah. And so oh, they yeah. let him drive. Whoop whoop whoop. They pull him over like. They've been going in the same car for weeks now. They finally yo, drive. Yeah, I swear when they get when she when he gave him the keys in the kitchen and said he could drive, I swear I'm like, oh, he about <laughs> to get pulled over by that same cop with the speed gun. Uh-huh. I'm telling you, I smelled it. And sure yeah. enough. So I have. Yep, sure enough, man. And that was just one of the parts where, like I said, all too, all too familiar with that. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, driving yeah. while black is what we call it. You know, mm-hmm. it happens all too often here in Brooklyn, up in New York City. You know, I know for a fact that I've been stopped just because I was black. You know, just because oh, I'm yeah. a black kid in the car, whatever. Oh, yeah. you, you know, I've had. You know, I don't have a, I don't have one of them, them luxury cars right now. But I've had them. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I've had them. You know. Like my man Day Day into Friday said, I, you know, I had, you know, I had some, had a little some, some. Yeah, and they would stop us, man. They would stop us and frisk us and 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 all that other stuff. Oh I yeah, mean, I've yeah, been yeah, I've been yeah. pulled over. I've been pulled over for. I've been pulled over for who's riding with me. Oh yeah, of course it was us. You know what I'm <laughs> it was it was us. Yeah, it was us. Yeah, so you know he had to put your hands where I could see the moment, and they re- and the, 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 the the cop reaching the listen the parents the parents sitting there surprised like uh this is our son, 
You know what I mean? But that's when they, you know, that's their reality. That they had to realize as well. Like, whoa, what? You know, they had to realize they really in it. You understand what I'm saying? Well, they didn't. They they still didn't understand, man. They were just no. so blinded no. by their whiteness. Ah, uh, man, I don't know. I don't know, man. They're just they're just like green. They don't understand. They cut. They kind of downplayed it every time he complained about it. You know, the guy came up into the elevator and was like, hey, "You guys all right?" And he's like, "Yeah, we all right in here." And they're like, "Man, somebody was was a little out of line." And he's like, "Yeah, tell me about it, that guy, huh?" And they're like, "We were talking about you." I was like, "What the hell?" <laughs> like, y'all, his parents, man. So they like, knew. He said, "She said yeah. they knew. She said they knew. They're not convinced." Yeah, I'm sure the acceptable Negro. The acceptable mm -hmm. Negro, one mm -hmm. of the good ones. All all of those things is terms that's used, right? One of the yeah. good ones. You're one of the good ones. You're an acceptable Negro. Um, um, what's another one? Um, you speak well for. Oh yeah. You, speak, you, you know, you speak well. You know, like yeah. hey, we, you're, 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 you're not like the others. Right, right. Well, those yeah. are some of the terms used when you're yeah. when they're when when they're accepting you, right? Because yeah. the one thing about them is playing the game the right way usually means playing the game the, the game white the way. White way. That's, That's right. what he said. The white way. He said the yeah. white way. White right? way. The white way. Yeah. So the, the acceptable Negro, right? These are things that in media they will put out there and make sure that we get a nice flood of them and see them, you know, for you know, see them and be like, okay, I want to, I want to be that, you know, if that's who they're accepting, I'm going to be like them. So you said some of them it says it says says the arc, the arc, the archetypical black characters, social outcasts who assimilate and conform to white non culture, the portrayal of the acceptable Negro on TV shows and movies, um, Arnold Jackson. From different strokes, yeah. You know what I mean, little little orphan boy with the white with the with the white rich dad. You know mm -hmm. what I mean, right rich um um stepdad. I mean not stepdad, yeah. um adoptive dad. Um yeah. Steve Urkel, little nerdy little nerdy black guy. Because all these are unassuming. Because you got the little boy, then you got mm -hmm. the little, little you know Urkel is a little nerdy guy who who's who search who's you know searching for love but he can't find love. You know what I mean. Mm -hmm. He's the main character, though. Don't get it twisted. Now he's the he's the he's the top character, Carlton Brink, Banks. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. old, old sellout of a character in a sense. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know you got two of these facts of life, but now mo most of these kids is either assimilating to being white boys, or some of them are surrounded by white people, and and what they're doing, right? Yeah, and I think TV was trying to program us, not trying. They were programming society to um, to put in the minds of the black youth that if you want to be acceptable, you have to, you know, conform to this standard of whiteness. And, you know, you have to pose your, you, in order to not be a threat, to not be looked at as a threat, you have to act like them. And, you know, that's, you know, what it translates everything from being able to to play on a sports team to, to as a, especially, you know, in a certain position of quarterback like like Colin or to getting the good job. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it, it kind of it's it worked to a degree, but we're in a stage today where people are waking up. There's just too many forms of media where we can, we have the access to share and, you know, tell each other the truth. Right. Like someone says, you speak well. For you speak, what was said? Yeah. You speak, hold on, they were talking about you speak well with no, yeah, yeah, yeah. You speak well. Like, what you mean I speak well? Like, what the hell are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't you understand. like the sound of my voice? Yeah, well, yeah. Some people do actually, you know, not for nothing. <laughs> but, but, you know, so it says, it says, this thing is white people don't get don't get to tell us who is acceptable to us. We can rock with Steve Urkel okay. or Steve Biko, Marcus Garvey, Huey P. Newton, Ida B. Wells, Tony Morrison, Fannie Luhema, Asati Asata Asata Shakur, Patrice Lumumba, Kwame Nkrumah, James Baldwin. You know some of the good ones. That was one of the things yeah, that he yeah. says. He says, "I'm ready for the world to realize superiority causes an element of inferiority." Yes, a superiority complex is definitely a sign of inferiority. It's got to be. Right. The, it got to be the number one sign. It got to be the yeah. number one sign. You know what I mean? Yeah. Of inferiority Absolutely. is that you have a need to feel like you have to impose your superiority over someone. And yeah, that, there's a saying. There's a mm -hmm. saying that says, uh, you know, lions don't turn their heads at barking dogs. 
you know mm -hmm. the lion knows his power he doesn't have to prove himself so anytime you see that you know even you know i used to be in a little arena back in the days i had a buddy who used to fight pit bulls and you know when anytime you see the, the dogs rah, 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 that's a dog that loses he's always trying to right. prove something by scaring somebody you know what I mean? Right. Same thing with the inferiority complex. You you have this need to try to assert yourself as being superior. So um, in closing out, we're going to speak to one of the ancestors. Um, I mean, you know, we're going to give him his props. I mean, I guess we're paying homage to one of the ancestors real quick. So we're going to shoot okay. down to um, Ramari Bearden. And then I want to hear your, your poem there, Zach. All right. Okay. So Ramar, R R Roma, Ro is Roma? Romare. 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 Romare Bearden. This is a man in 1930, an African-American Negro League baseball player who would have been the first black player in Major League Baseball, was offered a contract by the Philadelphia Athletics on the condition he would have to play as a white man, meaning he would have to deny his black heritage and pretend to be white since he was so light-skinned and the team's management thought they could hide it from the public so they wouldn't be ridiculed for having a black player. He unapologetically denied and went on to be considered one of the most important American artists of the 20th century. His artwork depicted Black American culture and experience and create and creative and experience and creativity and thought-provoking ways, making visually powerful statements. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you start out one way, and it's not necessarily your mission in life. That's right. And what this man showed me is that his integrity, his integrity was 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 bigger. More important. Than, was more important than 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 money in his pockets. Yeah. You know. And what I mean? Colin, Colin said something similar. He said, "With football, he, told, he was telling his parents, with football, I feel like myself." He said, mm -hmm. "With baseball, he's like an outsider. He's like I can't explain it. He was a teenager." Right. Like because everybody kept pushing him towards baseball. He did well in baseball. 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 And then he ended up doing football, and then the rest is history because he doesn't make that statement. He doesn't do what he's doing. He's not Colin Kaepernick. He's not the black activist of today's time. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I just want to give a salute to that man for doing it, doing it the way he did it, man, because he sparked a fire in a lot and a lot of men, included myself included. You know what I mean? Because I started to have to ask, what am I doing as far as making a statement for myself? And, and 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 changing history so with that being said zachary the floor is yours man just um hit us with your poem man okay it's entitled take a knee gladiators clad with modern day armor pads through injury and defeat keep you springing to your feet off that living room lazy boy glued to tv sun rain snow or sleep they bear your unwavering belief to be the one bravest team for 17 straight weeks on war-torn shoulders supported by turf-charred, mangled, banged-up knees, while the forgotten blood of slave soldiers that star-spangled banner bleeds. The same nation you claim to be came to be by the blood, sweat, and tears of these that built this nation on its knees and put it on its feet. From slaves to being labeled, the very name slave masters never wanted them to reach. Knee grow, because they were never supposed to grow past the master's knee. Now slavery may be over, but only to a degree. Plantations became prison systems made to keep and prevent their seeds from growing into trees. The produce of those who still flourish, bear fruit, nourish, and feed. The children of the same damn nation headed for damn nation that try but can't manage to keep them on their knees. So don't try to take the knees out from under a man that understands and stands for his beliefs by taking a knee as a stance, not to stand for injustice at the hands of the powers that be, to stand on his feet instead of dying on his knees in nonviolent, silent protest, not even exercising freedom of speech from a people knowing they were never really let to be free, not against the flag or the veterans that fight and sacrifice their own lives for my and your peace but against the police that continue to chop them down at the knee. Another cop goes free. Another brother shot dead every day in the streets. So please, before you open your fat mouth, point your finger, burn his jersey and malign his bravery, learn his story and U.S. his story. 
then you might understand the risk he took, takes, and meets every single day when he walks down the street just to breathe the same air you breathe, but still not feel as free, which may seem a bit extreme unless you black and still thrive, live and breathe in today's society. Matter of fact, you too should fall down on bended knees and pray that the very knees you despise and criticize never ever break or give from underneath the weight of this nation it's been carrying on its back since way back before it was known as home of the free. Wow. And with that, people, I have nothing to say. It's nothing to say. Just give that man his props right now. Giving him, giving him his what's in. Oh, that was deep. That props was deep. to Colin Kaepernick, man. You the inspiration yeah, behind that. Yes, man. And you inspired us to do what we're doing. Bombs over Absolutely. Baghdad. We out of here. Peace.